Okay, right, that's dry now. I've hurried it a little bit and it's just started to lift there, but if you just press that back down, it'll be, uh, it'll be okay. So that's the sky and the uh, far distance just about done. Uh, what I want to turn my attention now is to these uh, rocks and there's a little trick for painting rocks. It's nothing more complicated than, than this, which is, um, as you can see, it's been used before. Um, the important thing is, is, is just a piece of uh, watercolour paper. You can use cardboard or pieces of plastic, really anything. Um, the thing to do is to make sure that you um, tear it randomly so that you get different shapes on those edges and to keep changing the direction of it when you, uh, when you use it. Um, for the rocks, we're going to mix uh, some burnt umber with a little bit of blue in it. So we're going to mix burnt umber, a little bit of Payne's grey, and then some ultramarine. And I want that to be quite strong, because these rocks are going to be the focal point of this painting. So there we've got a, a mixture now of blue and, and brown. And I'm not going to over mix this. Um, I want some of the blue to show through on the rocks. You'll see why in a moment. So all you do, just make sure. I always try and make sure that I've got more than enough paint than I need for the job in hand because there's nothing worse than having to mix more paint halfway through doing what you're doing. Just want a bit more blue. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And the strength is okay. I wanted it to be quite strong. And all you do is dip your dip your paper into and put it quite flat, and then hold it flat on your board, and literally just move it around in kind of jaggy motions. Keep altering the direction of your piece of paper, and then you'll get some interest. No two rocks are the same, so and I'm just trying to dip into some more of this some more of this blue. I'm just gonna strengthen that with a little bit more brown. I just want a bit more brown and that mix it's it's gone a bit black. So I'm gonna mix a bit more burnt umber into that mix. This is gonna give me quite a strong colour. I'm taking a different side of this. Now on the shadow side of these rocks, um, bear in mind that the, the sun's coming from this direction, so this paint's still wet. Uh, what I want to do is with burn a bit of black and the brown to denote the shadow side. I'm mixing this quite strong. And everywhere on that side of a rock, I'm painting a little bit of shadow. got to make sure that this mix is stronger than the one you've just put on. And in those crevicey bits there, that would be quite dark also. And so on the bottom of the rocks there would also be shadow, so I'm just denoting some shadow in those areas. And it's, it's important to be fairly random. If you end up with an area that looks as if it's a bit samey, like this area here and this area here, just uh, alter the shape of it and then it'll look a bit more interesting. I'm just weakening that now and I'm just going to bring some of this colour, which will be no kind of melting snow and a bit of shadow. 
Yeah, looking good now. And this, these areas here are, are areas of paper that I've just left. They look as if they've got snow still sitting on them. And yeah, quite pleased with that now. So again, I'll just uh, I'll just switch this off while I just dry this next plane. Back in a mo. Okay, that's quite dry now. I've just finished with the hair dryer. Uh, while you were out, I also changed my water as well. I like to change my water regularly. It helps um, to keep your paintings clean. Um, and having translucent washes is important in watercolour painting. So, try and avoid the muddiness. Um, on these areas here now, I just want to denote these shadows a little bit stronger. The sun's coming from this direction. So, with the same blue that I used here, I've just strengthened it just a smidge because we're now in the foreground. And I just want to darken and use a bit of dry brush there just to denote that glistening of the snow. I'm just going to do the same down this side just for balance. And that's quite nice now. It's looking like a, a little ridge there in this area. It looks like it's those in undulations. Um, I don't think we need to let that... I don't think we need the blow dryer on that. Now what I'm going to do now is just to just take a half inch uh, flat brush um, and using the same mix that I use for the rocks. No, I won't actually use that. It's burnt umber I want. And so this is burnt umber and yellow ochre. And I just want to denote some um, grasses sticking up through the snow now. And these two with a little bit of the blue should give me that. I'm just testing this dry brush. I want to denote some grasses, so I'm just taking enough of this paint off the brush. That's about right. And then everywhere that where I want some grasses, I just literally pick up and dab. So it's just a uh, you just flick up and dab. Don't want to overdo this. It's tempting to. <laughs> Just a little bit more brown. Try and vary your colour mixes wherever you can and then it just adds interest to your painting. And again, I'm just grounding these grasses just by having a little horizontal taps and then it looks like shadow. Remember the sun's coming from this direction so there would be some shadow kind of in behind here. I just want to suggest some rocks and this is a kind of track that works its way up the hillside and that's fine for there. Just wash that brush out. Using a, a one inch flat brush now, 30 mil. Just going to wet that and dry it and dry it off. A brush that's dry uh, won't pick up paint properly, so you've got to wet them first, but they've got to be just slightly damp to be able to pick up the um, the paint. What I'm going to do now, with the same similar mix that I used, I'm just going to add a little bit more light red in that. We now want to do the boughs of these trees here. So with a flat brush, I actually prefer to use a flat brush than a rigger. If we drag it horizontally, you can see that that looks like a, a silver birch. So, got a rocking drawing board here. Just carefully. And trees always grow narrow as they get higher up so you've got to make sure that if you do if you overdo it like I did here 